Well, I think that the transition from unfit to fit is where people see the most dramatic effects. Yes. And, and that should be encouraging. Uh, I have a colleague, her name is Wendy Suzuki. She, for years, she studied memory. She's at NYU. Now she's the incoming dean of students at NYU. And the reason I'm so happy about that is that she's talked about and published really good scientific studies on 30 minutes of cardiovascular exercise early in the day. And now she's a 10 minute cold shower person because she lives in New York, harder to get access to ice tubs and things. Improving focus, stress resilience, cognitive function. I mean, finally, there are data to point to the fact that doing cardiovascular or weight training exercise, if it's intense enough and it comes early in the day, especially, but also if you do it late in the day, they've also shown that people's cognitive function actually goes up. This was all correlative before. It was like, well, you exercise, your heart, your cardiovascular system is better, therefore your brain is better, therefore there's this indirect effect on mood and performance. But now they know everything from grip strength to attention capacity to uh, task switching. There are all these measures like the Stroop, Stroop test of all these things of cognitive uh, flexibility and the, all of that improved by physical exercise categorically over and over. It doesn't matter if it's boys, girls, men, women, what age. And so now we no longer have to speculate as to whether or not exercise is good for the brain also. It absolutely is. And her work is now being transferred into basically curriculum for students. Her goal is that students are going to go through college, not just getting their grades, but coming out healthier than they came in. And mm -hmm. hopefully that'll wick out to everybody, not just people in college, obviously, but will wick out to everybody. So they're going to be running studies, getting data from these kids. I think it's really important because I think that everything is kind of murky and kind of indirect up to a point, and now they're actually really solid data. Well, there's also this prejudice, unfortunately, that uh, anything physical is not an intellectual pursuit, that it's a, almost the opposite. It's a vanity pursuit. No, that's ridiculous. But th that is a yeah. prejudice that many really intelligent people, otherwise intelligent people, have. Right? Yeah. Well, um, a colleague at Columbia has a Nobel Prize, Richard Axel. Um, plays squash like multiple times per week. He used to play basketball, though he says not very well. Um, Eric Kendall, Nobel Prize in uh, for research on memory, swam a mile three times a week. Now it's half a mile because he's in the late 90s. He still does it. Torrance and Weasel, Christ. Nobel Prize for vision, my scientific great-grandparents, 96 years old, still jogs every morning, 45 minutes, wow. and still mentally sharp, right? So the smartest people, most accomplished scientists I know, all extremely physically active for decades. Mm. So I, whatever smart people think that physical activity is just for meatheads and jocks, they're, they're obviously not smart enough to know how it really works. It's just like, it's not that they're not smart, it's just this unfortunate prejudice that people adopt and then have a very difficult time shedding. You know, I think they associate um, physical fitness and physical activity with being a pursuit of people that are kind of like clodhoppers. Yeah, you know? I think you're right. I think there's also a little bit of the tone that um, came back to me early on. Like, you know, some colleagues have been really interested in like, oh, I'm really excited about, you know, eating more omegas or eating more fish or, you know, whatever, taking athletic greens, et cetera. And then some of them like, oh, it's all pills and powder kind of stuff. They, they don't, they see it as over there mm -hmm. and when they don't realize that, sure, you don't need those things, but a general theme of taking care of oneself physically can translate, does translate to taking care of oneself mentally. The reverse is not true, right? Plenty of intellectual smart people who look like melted candles, mm -hmm. right? And who function like melting it. They sleep with their mouth open. They have sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they're, they're a wreck. And that wreck shows up somewhere in their 60s. And I see this all the time because I've attended no fewer than 10 funerals for brilliant people. Yeah. And those funerals, with one or two exceptions, were all because they took terrible care of themselves. Well, I in my world, in the comedy world, uh, obviously I see that because most of my friends don't take care of themselves. You know, there's a, a good percentage of people in that world when they get to a certain age. Like, there's friends that are my age, and they look like they're my dad. Do you? I almost wonder whether or not they somehow pair the idea that their talent and their ability is linked to their being unhealthy. Oh yeah, there's many, which is but crazy, it's a, but, but it's a, just an excuse. It's just an excuse. It really is. 